Hello and welcome to Project Home DIY. I'm Christine, your curator and owner of Project Home DIY. You've already received your box, so let's get started and get to creating. This month's project is something that is going to be used in multiple ways. I'm super excited about it because it is not just a one time or one thing use, you can use it many ways. So that's awesome. So let's unpack. All you new people, welcome. Thanks for joining us. And this is your starter kit, the essential items you're going to need for this month as well as in future months. So make sure you keep these items. The sanding block, the paintbrush, glue sticks, and the glue gun. All of this will be used this month. So make sure you get this out and get your hot glue guns plugged in. Six inch piece of wood. Stencil. This might be intimidating, but don't worry. I have some tricks for you. Your wood. Swivel bearing, paint, screws, and mending plates. So there's our items. <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do, step number one, is sand the edges of your blocks a little bit with the sanding block that you received so they are not sharp and rough for your final product. Once everything is sanded nice and smooth, and again, you'll sand before we paint as well, take your boards and choose which side you're going to have face up on your Lazy Susan game board table. So look at the knots, look at any edges that you want to hide, make sure those go towards the bottom. So we're working from the top up. So this is actually the bottom side. And if you're like me, I like the look of wood grain. So if there are some grainier pieces that you can actually feel the grain, those will sand out better if you keep them on the surface. So once we paint and then we'll sand over these, these actual wood grain, these raised parts that you can feel, will um, show through the paint once we sand them off. So if you like that look, put the rougher side um, face down right now. So line those up. And you're going to take your mending plates. And these are called mending plates. If you ever need something like this in the future, they make all sorts, all sizes, everything you possibly need. And this is just an easy way, easy, sturdy way to be able to connect these pieces of wood. about an inch inside of the wood. You don't really have to measure for this part. Um, 
the exact measurement, it won't matter. But just start screwing those mending plates in with one screw in each hole. If you have a drill, feel free to use it. You don't have to screw these all in by hand. But if, so if you have a drill, go ahead and use it. Now I'm gonna turn it this way because when I want to join these two pieces, I wanna make sure that the joint is nice and tight. I don't wanna screw them together and there be a space there. I wanna make sure it's nice and tight together. you have all of them in, <clears throat> just double check that they are insecure, give them one last good little twist. If you have someone around maybe that might be a little bit stronger, you can give, have them give one last twist, but if not, that's okay too. So once you have your mending plates all together, <clears throat> take your sanding block and again, sand those edges a little bit because these are the surfaces that are going to be touched the most. So just give those a good sand. Make sure you've also sanded the surface of your block, so, or your um, sign, so it is Nice and smooth for the stencil once we get that on. If you notice that some of your wood is not exactly lined up, um, just take and I held it up like this and pound it down one end and that will straighten out that wood. <clears throat> Sometimes the screws when you're screwing in the mending plates, if they're not exactly centered in that circle, they will pull one way or the other. So that's all that happens. So now, our step is to um, put the stencil on, and this is tricky. I'm going to tell you that. What I can tell you is take your time with it, but it is tricky and it could possibly get wrinkled up, but we're going to try our best. So <clears throat> set your wood to the side, but have it close by. Take your stencil and tape it down to a table. So then you're not you or not um, working with a flimsy piece of paper. So tape it down flat. Okay, and I'm going to start with the word kind. So I'm going to peel that up and just go slow. If the insides come with it, that's okay. We can deal with that later the insides of the letter, that's okay. And then gently, loosely, don't press it down, place it on your sign. And get it to where you like it. I'm going to keep the lettering below that bottom line. And then smooth it all out. And it's good to work one direction to the next when putting vinyl down, because then you'll make sure that there's, you don't, if you work towards the center, you'll have a lump here in the middle. So work one way. So that's nice and set down. I'm going to dot my eye. Okay. <clears throat> now my B. He's going to go right here in the center or even just a little bit above. So this is going to be the hard part. All these little pieces have to come off, but just slowly peel from the top down. And all those insides should stay there. So I peel from the head down and then place your B. And you can see on the wood 
how to make sure that he's straight. If you want him crooked, please, by all means, do that. I'm looking here, I have about, you know, three and a little fingers. There's three, so I'm about centered. And then I'm looking at the top of his wings compared to a piece of wood. And I'm gonna move this side down, just a tish. And then, I'm going to press that vinyl down. Again, work one direction and push vinyl down and then work the other direction. Just don't work towards the center. Don't start over here and press this down, press this down, and then keep working towards the center. You'll come up with a bubble. Either start from the center and work <coughs> left, and then start from the center and work right, whatever works best. But if you get a lump, you'll have a lump. <coughs> okay, so I wanna make sure that V is all pressed down really nicely. If there's a bump in the vinyl, Squish it down as best as you can with your fingernail. And then at the end, if there is a lump, paint will get under it, but I'll show you how to fix that. It's not the end of the world, I promise. Okay, so our stencil is placed and we will begin to paint. See, that wasn't as bad as it could have been. I hope you all made it through that step. We'll get this little bee out of here. And so your paint, the little story behind this paint, we're having really big supply issues right now with our so, some of our bulk suppliers. So we did bottle our own paint this month. Um, I think this actually might be the way to go for future products because we can give you guys much better paint quality um, <clears throat> than what we can buy already pre-packaged. So this is gray, although you'll notice on the outside it does say beautiful brown eyes because that is the original color that I was going to use for this project and I last minute changed to gray. So I hope that most of you are happy with the gray change and not upset with the brown change, but here's the beauty of our projects. If you have a teal paint that you think would go much better with your picnicking or game table or dinner table, wherever you're going to place this, use it so you have the freedom to choose whatever color you want to use. I thought gray, I'm more of a gray, I like gray, it's my favorite color. Um, and I feel like what, tr what with what's trending right now, cooler colors are definitely in. So I went with gray. That, But it does say beautiful brown eyes. Ignore that, it is gray. So there's my one disclaimer. Um, so get your paintbrush and your paint and just go ahead and, oops, that's a little much. Oops. I'll end up using it, but not right this second. Here we go. Let me clean that it up. And the cool thing is, is we have lots of, <clears throat> there'll be lots of extras for you guys to be able to do stuff with in the future too. Okay, so go ahead and paint that, your whole board. <clears throat> now, painting over your stencil right here, they're in the seams and gaps. I suggest going this direction over the seams, going opposite of the seam and not filling the seam. That just creates a better look once your stencil is off a better finished look, but that's just a trick I've learned over the years of painting thousands of what I call, these are called multi board signs in my business, um, <clears throat> and that is just how we've learned that it paints best. So before I get the whole surface painted, I want to make sure I do the edges. If you have an extra plate or something to pour paint on, you can do that, it might be easier for doing the edges. You do have enough paint to paint the all four sides, so you sure can. And when I paint the <clears throat> grainy ends of the wood, if you dab paint in there, it works a little bit better.
one final brush over. Smooth it all out. Check the edges for any drips. And then you are done painting. <clears throat> So set your sign to dry. This will take about an hour to dry. And if you have a little space heater, set it up in that and it'll dry even quicker. That's my like 10 minute trick. It'll be drying 10 minutes, so set that up. And once you have your sign dry, complete the next step. The dried board all finished nice and neat. Painted nicely. If you find that you missed a spot, just touch it up, not a big deal. So, <clears throat> first step is just to peel off our stencil. And you'll see the natural wood show through. This is the fun part. It's fun to be able to see what you created from that. And I love this color contrast. It's beautiful, it's perfect. Glad I went with the gray, I'm sorry if you're not. But you should have possibly other paints. Okay, so in this center piece, if you're noticing, I don't have the right tool that I want. This is maybe a flat blade, blade screwdriver, but if you're noticing some paint down in there, you can scrape it out like that. But other than that, it looks pretty darn good. I'm going to sand um, on the top a bit and get the finish that I like. If you do have an orbital um, electric hand sander, you can use that for the sides. It'll take a lot of um, work out of it. But if you don't, just go ahead and use the sanding block. It'll just take a little bit more time to get that finish that you want. But go ahead and sand away on the top. If you don't want um, it to look worn or used or anything, keep it just like this and don't sand. Um, you can skip this step. But I'm gonna sand a little bit. Okay, I like that look, got some sanded, and now for the last step, clean up this mess. Okay, put your board face down, and this is going to be super important that this step is done correctly and accurately so your Lazy Susan is balanced appropriately. If it is not balanced, it will not spin right. <laughs> and you won't like it. So let's just make sure it's done the best we can. <clears throat> we need to find center of the entire um, board piece. So your boards are 12 inches, so center is gonna be six. I'm gonna make these big exaggerated lines because we're gonna need them for two different reasons. So there's six inches. I'm going to put it here in the center. Six inches. And then I'm going to turn it the other way and do the same um, this direction. So this is a little bit differently. Different. Your full board <clears throat> span the other direction is 12 and a half inches. So half of that is going to be six and a quarter. So mark six and a quarter. It's not exactly square. And then you can take, I forgot, I wish I had a straight edge, a ruler would be handy. <clears throat> I'm going to just mark a line down the whole thing right here. Line, and then I'm going to mark the same line right here. So that is my center, and 
this guy needs to be centered in there as well. So this is a three inch bearing. So a half of three inches is one and a half. I'm gonna mark one and a half on this guy. And then make sure that those lines line up with the other lines on the board. Super important to make sure this is all straight. <clears throat> okay, so now we have that marked. You must mark this piece before we get started. So we need to find center on these. These are six inches, so three inches all the way around. going to help you in final placement of this steady, this sturdy piece at the bottom. <clears throat> we included this piece because if we just put this bearing on the bottom, flipped it over, your um, Lazy Susan would be, if you put something in the corner of it, it wouldn't balance appropriately. So this covers a lot more space and will finish off and cover up this metal piece and make it sturdy. So. Now you have all marks marked at three inches on each side. That is there. So essentially, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do before I do it, just so you know ahead of time. You will take your bearing and turn it, make sure you have it centered from your marks. And then you're going to turn it just a little bit and put in all of your screws in the bottom four. And that's what these four screws are for. <clears throat> and then, once you have that place, straighten it back out, and it will be attached then, so it won't move anymore. Fill this with hot glue, lots and lots of hot glue, just in the metal, don't let it drip over the board, don't let it drip through these holes, don't go through the center. We still need this part mechanism to be able to move, so don't glue it together. But put the hot glue um, on there, and then we're going to put this straight down by lining up all of our lines again. So that's the only way that we can get this board, this six inch piece, centered in the bearing on the board. So, a couple steps, but we can do it. So back to step one. Center your bearing, turn it to the side just a tad and get your screws out and screw them in. Once you have two in, it'll be sturdy enough for you to be able to move it. two screws in and it's sturdy on. Okay, <clears throat> all four are on and we are good to go. If your bearing is not spinning um, nicely and smoothly, the, one of the screws, one of the edges of this metal is lifted up and the, bear, the balls can't fit in there flat, so make sure you just have them all screwed down and just as tight and even. So there is that part. <clears throat> now for the last step, make sure your, your um, swivel bearing is straight on there. We're gonna take our hot glue gun and we're going to put lots of glue on that sucker. Okay, straighten it back out and make sure everything is placed. And then hold it down. Squish. And that is the finished product.
you now have your very own Summertime Lazy Susan, or Family Game Board, or even better, put a hanger on the back, and you have a wall painting sign, which I think I will do that and be able to have it as a wall hanging while I'm not using it, and then I can take it off the wall and use it as a Lazy Susan on our picnic table or for the Scrabble board for game night. So you don't have to reach over, you can just gently spin it from underneath the board. Enjoy your new project. I hope you find many uses out of it. Join our Project Home DIY Facebook page and share your completed projects there. We love to see how you make them one of a kind pieces for you.